Traveler, the venerable giant of science fiction role-playing, a system that's the living avatar of science fiction in the days before men with screwdrivers became the expected norm, versus me on No Pants Saturday. Apparently, I didn't learn my lesson from Battletech. <laughs> Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Let it not be said that I don't keep my word. Sometimes I may be a little late, but I always follow through. See, a while back, I asked about what would make a good milestone review when I passed 1,000 subs on YouTube. It was Stormforger who suggested I do Traveler for that milestone, which at the time I accepted because I figured it'd be quite a while before I'd have to follow through on it, if ever. Well... That obviously changed as time went on, so consider this my very late pay the piper moment. If I screw up, blame Stormforge. So what the hell is Traveler anyway? Well, it's been the monolith of science fiction role-playing for many since the late 70s. It should be noted that while it is a work of science fiction, it's got less in common with wizards in space or hippies in space that people have come to expect from pop culture SF. If anything, it's got a stronger relationship with the high-concept SF from the 1960s. Guys like Asimov, Niven, Pornell, and so on. I suppose a more contemporary analog would be Firefly or EVE Online. Maybe The Expanse, but I haven't seen that at the, at the time of this recording. I've seen some call it hard SF, which is close, but I wouldn't call it 100% accurate. It certainly leans towards hard, so I'd call it hard-leaning, obviously, which I find a bit more accurate. Regardless, Traveler takes place in a feudalistic galaxy known as the Third Imperium, created by humanity after the first two came and went by other races. While interstellar travel is possible, it operates on a jump system that always takes one week. A ship's engine can travel one to six parsecs per jump, depending on the quality of the engine, or for those of you who aren't astronomy nerds, about 19 to 114 trillion miles. A typical Traveler campaign involves the crew of a merchant frigate moving cargo from point to point, be it legal, subjectively legal, or very illegal, depending on your interpretation. But the big question I had to ask when doing a Traveler review is, which edition to use? The game's been around, as I mentioned before, and much like RuneQuest, it's passed through plenty of hands since its original creation in 1977. If anything, I'd say Traveler is the bigger offender compared to RuneQuest. There's, of course, the original from GDW, the 2300 version, which used D10s for some reason, the Mega Traveler attempted reboot, then a reboot again with the new era before GDW went under. In 1996, there was Mark Miller's Traveler, which attempted to undo all the big events from the last few editions. Then it moved to GURPS two years later, then to D20 in 2002, then to the Hero System in 2007, and nowadays the main ones that are supported are Traveler 5.1 and Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. So, I had two reasonable options here, 5.1 or Mongoose 2nd. I put it to a vote, and the unanimous winner was Mongoose 2nd. Thus, that's the one I'm going with, but my usual rules on not playing Edition Wars still apply. And with that long, long intro out of the way, it's time to answer the age-old question. How does it hold up? Well, let's find out. The core book for Mongoose 2nd Edition runs at about 241 pages and is a fairly modern kind of format, with a bit of art and presentation that's on par with Mongoose's other venerable lines. However, I had one bone to pick with the layout. The table of contents is of White Wolf quality. To say, it just shows the chapters and nothing else. White Wolf was notorious for this, and it's something I've never cared for and still don't. Made even worse is the lack of an index, at least not in my copy. While the PDF does do a decent job with the bookmarks, rules are still rules. Traveler is equal parts famous and infamous for its character generation system. It's famous for being one of the earliest adopters of a life path system. It's also infamous for the fact that characters can die during generation. Some editions didn't do this, but we're not using those versions. We'll be exploring this with a character named Senek H. Urita. If that name sounds a bit Star Trek-y, well, it kind of is. I figured it'd be ironic. The first step is choosing a species. These can take the form of the decadent Villani, the telepathic Zodani, and the young Salamani for human-like races, 
And beyond that, there's the centaur-like vegans known as the Kakri, the feline Aslan, the canine Varger, the hexapodal Hivers, and the insect-like Droin. We'll be going with Solomani in this case, basically a standard human. Second, we roll for characteristics, which is done by rolling 2d6 six times. The spread we get in this is 10, 9, 2 sixes, a 5, and a 4. We'll commit those to our starting attributes as follows. Strength 6, Dexterity 10, Endurance 5, Intellect 6, Education 9, and Social Standing 4. Third is Background Skills, a starting list of skill picks that we get based on our education roll. In our case, we'll get Athletics, Flyer, Profession, and Survival here at rank 0. Fourth is Career, and this is where the infamy begins. There's a handful of careers we can pick from, and we'll go with Army Infantry, rolling an 8 on a 2d6 to qualify for the career. Our first term grants us the Drive, Athletics, Gun Combat, Recon, Melee, and Heavy Weapon skills, also at rank 0. We then have to roll 2d6 to determine if we survive our term. Fortunately, we rolled a 12, so we survived. Next, we roll for an event. In our case, we were thrown into a ground war and have to make an education roll to avoid injury. Unfortunately, we rolled a 6 when we needed an 8, meaning we were injured and our strength was reduced by 1. On a positive, we were promoted to rank 1 in the career, rolling 1d6 on the infantry promotion skill table, gaining the recon skill. We'll keep going one more time, but this time using the service skills table, boosting the melee skill. This requires another survival check, which we succeeded, and again, roll for an event. We were assigned to a peacekeeping role as our event, and we'll develop the admin skill. After passing an advancement check, we're promoted to rank 2, where we'll pick the advanced education table, gaining the engineer skill. While we could go further, we'll opt to muster out for the time being. Because of our two terms, we gained three total benefit rolls and three cash rolls. We went with one cash roll and two benefit rolls, gaining 10,000 credits, one to intelligence, and one to endurance. Character creation certainly lives up to its reputation, but that's going to be a double-edged sword. Some won't like the risk of death in the process, but I look at it like a game of chicken, even if it's a bit of a demented one. There's always the temptation of one more term, but taking it involves taking the chance of losing everything. Some of you will feel luckier than others. Moreover, it just means that the game is going to be a bit trickier for pickup style games because there isn't a way to create PCs quickly. It's good, just an at-your-own-risk kind of good. Traveler uses the Cepheus system, which is a 2d6 based method of resolution. The die roll is modified by attribute and skill levels, with the default target number of 8 to pass. The difference between the final roll and the difficulty determines the degree of success. A difference of minus 6 is an exceptional failure, minus 2 to 5 is an average failure, minus 1 is a marginal failure, 0 is a marginal success, 1 to 5 is an average success, and a 6 or higher is an exceptional success. An additional modifier that takes place is boons and banes which allow an extra d6 to the die roll and dropping the lowest or highest, respectively. Those of you who are familiar with Advantage and Disadvantage from 5th edition will be right at home with that. Combat has been infamously brutal in Traveler over the years, and this is no exception. Participants have one significant action, a minor action, and a large number of reactions and free actions. Attacking is still a skill check, with reactions like dodge and parry applying a modifier to the attacker's roll. Damage goes straight to the Endurance attribute, then to either Strength or Dexterity, and no matter what, damage is always reduced by armor. Given that most weapons inflict 1 to 3 d6 of damage before the effect of the attack roll is added, this means tanking is not necessarily advisable, especially since you're always going to take at least 1 damage on a hit. Space combat works slightly differently, being step-based instead of a series of actions and reactions. These steps are dictated in the following order. Maneuver, where thrust can be allocated to movement or combat maneuvering. The attack step, firing ship weapons in their appropriate arcs. Reactions. And lastly, the action step. The role-focused support actions range from system management to electronic warfare. The amusing thing about the actual mechanics is that they're a lot simpler than one might think. In fact, it's safe to say Traveler is a case of a simple system with a complex surrounding. What this means is that, unlike other infamously complex games, the actual play part of the equation is far less daunting. Certainly unforgiving, 
but not insurmountable. That said, while I appreciate something like Boons and Banes, I'm not entirely sure how needed it is when the game already has two forms of hard modifiers baked in, modifying the die roll and modifying the target number. Those two seem to get more attention, while the extra die setup seems to be more of a GM fiat thing. The Third Imperium is a vast amount of space with many factions, groups, ships, technologies, and so on. That's a lot of ground to cover, and Traveler does the best it can. I will admit this edition is not as directly connected with the Third Imperium setting as some may wish it to be. But on the flip side, it means it's easy to adapt it to other SF settings, which some people have. However, Traveler is the living antithesis of beer and pretzels. This is not a game that's compatible with one-shots, in my opinion. Further emphasizing this point is the fact that you're not going from zeros to heroes, since advancement is slow and directly tied to age. If someone wanted a more rules-light take on SF, I'd recommend they turn towards something like Coriolis or Mindjammer instead of this. Truth be told, I am strongly of the opinion that this should have been split into three core books. One for the players, one for the GM, and one covering the setting. That's how it's been done in the past, and I think trying to do it all in one book is the reason why a lot of the setting material doesn't have enough chance to shine, in my opinion. All that said, Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition gets a stamp of Recommended. I really, really want to give it a stamp of Strongly Recommended, but some navigational issues and the fact that it's doing the setting but not quite setting thing in the core book ultimately holds it back in that regard. Even so, I do think this is a very refined and organized take on Traveler, and makes for a valuable addition to any SF gamer's library. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta go pack up before all the torches come out for all the things I missed out discussing this game. Stay frosty!